we talk a lot about red flags or green flags. What we don't talk about, though, is what you call silent red flags. Thank you so much for joining us today on Second Act TV. So happy to welcome back Sandy Weiner, the dating coach and relationship expert and author of Choice Points in Dating. Sandy, thank you so much for joining me again. Thanks so much for having me back. I always love being here with you, Soka. Oh, thank you. Well, I always love having you here. And I should point out to our viewers that this is now your second book. I want to make sure they're aware of it. I'll link to it, you know, with lots of, again, great advice on dating, exactly what we discuss on, on our segments with you here. And today, what I want to focus on, you know, we talk a lot about red flags or green flags, especially, you know, red flags. I watch out for this and, you know, don't waste your time if this shows up. What we don't talk about, though, or haven't talked about very much, is what you call, and, and lots of others call, silent red flags. I thought that was very interesting. Let's talk about that. What, what are silent red flags? So we often miss the red flags that are more subtle. They feel like they might not be a red flag. You see them. They might feel a little weird in your body, but you're not sure is this really a red flag or not? And so they're less obvious, but they're really important to pay attention to. Yeah. Well, let's get let's get right into it. Some of the uh, less obvious ones that we may not think about. Uh, your first one you have here, uh, they're too busy to date consistently. Yeah. So they may be a lovely person, but they've got a lot on their plate. They're not going to be a good partner. They're not going to help you feel safe in the relationship because they are sometimes there and sometimes not. And I've dated people like this who they just started a new business and they're putting a lot of energy into it and they forget that they put a, a date on the calendar with you and you're sitting there wondering, where are they? So those are a less obvious red flags because they're, they seem really like great people and they probably have wonderful traits. They're just not available to you right now. Yeah. And we, of course, want them to be so we, we ignore them. We'll get into that a little bit later. Why we ignore these 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 silent red flags. Uh, I hate this one. They talk about their crazy exes a lot. <laughs> <laughs> crazy exes. Yeah, the, the people who go, oh, all my exes were crazy. They were neurotic. Uh, they I never I, women are nuts. And, or men are nuts, you know, and either either sex talking about their exes is a, a sign that says it says a lot more about the person talking about the ex than the ex themselves. And look, we, we all have experienced relationships where it wasn't working out, but it's the fact that they're talking about it and they're putting the other person down and they're acting like they're the normal one and the ex is the crazy one. And that is a red flag. Yeah, I, I would call that a red flag. I don't even think that's so silent anymore. I know we talk about it a lot, to, so to us it is, but if it's a silent red flag to you, just know when, if you hear that, if somebody talks about the ex a lot, yeah, that, that's not a good sign. Uh, this is interesting. They trauma bond with you. I don't think I've heard that, not expressed like that anyway. Yeah, trauma bonding is a psychological term that just means that you bond with the hard things, previous relationships that didn't work out or your crazy childhood. And so all the stuff that comes up on the first date, I mean, all these things are part of you, but they're not things that you should be starting with. The fact that you were bonding through trauma means that you probably still haven't worked through a lot of your trauma. It means that you're identifying with your trauma. And your identity is so much more than your trauma. You're not going to want to bond on that stuff. You're going to want to bond on the good stuff first. Yeah, it's a silent red flag. They're jealous and don't trust you. Does that come up that quickly? It definitely can come up pretty quickly. I've seen it in clients where they've been on like, let's say a third date and they notice that the guy they're dating is pretty flirty. And so he's flirting with the waitresses 
and she has trust issues from her past. So she's freaking out. This guy is just, he's going to cheat on me. They ended up having conversation about it because she was working with me and we talked it out and realized that she was just projecting onto him. And there are many relationships that are self that are sabotaged by the fact that the person didn't do any of the work on themselves and they're bringing all their past and projecting it onto the person in front of them. Yeah, that was a tough one for me. I, somebody once said that, you know, the person in front of you or, or, or the past isn't the present. And that for some reason was one of those aha moments for me. But that, yeah, that's, that's tough, especially at 50 when we've had so many or over 50 when we've had so many relationships. Yeah, there's, there's a, that, that can come up. <laughs> This is interesting. Their home is a mess. <laughs> so I got a little pushback on this one because uh, one of the people reading, uh, hearing the video that I did on this said, well, my home is kind of a mess. I have four kids and I am a single mom and I don't have the income to hire somebody. So what if somebody judges me? And I said, you know, it's not, it's not about that. It's about the fact that somebody doesn't take care of of anything that this is the hoarder this is the person where you're having a first like a video chat with them and in the background you see piles and piles of papers and you go into their house and they haven't thrown anything out in a long time and so it's indicative of of a bigger issue usually that they have a chaotic life or they can't manage their life and you know, again, get curious. This is a more subtle sign. You want to know, is this something that they are just, it's temporary because their housekeeper isn't available or is this part of a bigger issue? Yeah. I, I hadn't thought about that. And it's something, yeah, pay attention to. And, and, you know, is that a habit? I think it's, as you just said, mismanaged money. I think that it's important. I don't know how early that comes up though. How, how would you know that early? Well, I think the whole money thing is something to pay attention to in general. Like, look at how they tip the waiter or don't tip the waiter. Look at how they say, uh, let's split the bill and then take out a calculator and they're not generous. But also if they say to you, I lost everything in a divorce and, uh, and I'm really struggling, you want to know what are they doing to rebuild? So we all have issues at times, you know, we're all prone to losing money, gaining money. It's how you deal with the crisis that matters. So if you are overspending, I dated somebody who spent way more than he had, and he was already in debt and he wasn't getting out of debt. And it's one thing to be in debt. It's another to stay in debt. Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean by mismanaging, or you haven't saved anything for your future. You never budget and you're you know, this guy was buying expensive things and he couldn't afford it. And it really made me feel unsafe in the relationship. It, I didn't feel like I could trust him to make good decisions. Um, they flirt with others and deny that it means anything. I think this may be similar to, to what we talked about just a moment ago, no? Yeah, so the, it's one thing to own it, that you're maybe you're a flirty person and you flirt with everyone, different sexes, you, the dog, the cashier. <laughs> like If you're just a very charming, flirty person, uh, that's one thing. But if somebody flirts heavily with other people and it makes you really uncomfortable and they don't really pay attention when you tell them, it makes me uncomfortable and they make you sound like you're the crazy one then that's something to pay attention to because they're really diminishing your feelings and they're not realizing that they're playing with fire. Right. right. And that does come up. That comes up early on. And I remember when I was online dating and it's it almost sometimes it was almost like the guy was trying to impress me or something by flirting with other women or getting a reaction. It was just the biggest turnoff ever. <laughs> yeah. I think people do it to impress. They want to show you that they're worthy of other women's yeah. attention. Um, it's just, it's not a good look. <laughs> no, no, it's not. I, again, I would almost call that a, for me, that's a, like a huge red flag. Just, I don't want to, I, I, this is not the way or the person I want to be with. Don't communicate consistently and lack emotional intimacy. I'm going to combine those two. Yeah. So somebody who doesn't communicate consistently is uh, like 
one week you'll hear from them every day. The next week you won't hear from them at all. They don't tell you that they're going to be busy at work and they just drop off the planet. Uh, and when you, again, these are all things like if you are in an emotionally mature relationship and it's developing well, you can talk about this and you can say, here's what I need. Is this possible? Can you communicate with me more consistently? You know, whatever it is that is important so that you feel less anxious. If the other person responds well, great. If they are erratic in any way, it is really a, a, a yellow flag. Mm -hmm. And then the emotional intimacy, it's somebody a lot of people will share, they'll share about their kidney disease and they'll share about their past relationships and they'll share about their wounds, but they don't really get emotionally close to you. Like they won't share their feelings. They won't share what they need. So it's kind of a, a sort of a smoke and mirrors. When somebody's sharing a lot, you think, oh, they're really being intimate and vulnerable, but they're not because they're not sharing from the heart. Yep. So that's an important one. Such a big and such a big difference. Yeah. Finally, the relationship progresses too quickly. We can't hammer that home enough, can we? <laughs> so, you know, sometimes people are in a hurry. I've dated people like this where I had a, a long time ago, I had a relationship with a guy and he was like, you're the one on the second date, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, what? I don't know you. And I didn't have enough self-awareness to say, this really isn't working for me. You're progressing way too quickly. Let's slow it down. So some people are in a hurry, bring it up. And if that person can't slow it down or makes you wrong or gets really angry at you, that's a red flag. That's not subtle anymore. Yeah. But if they're just in a hurry because they think, wow, I haven't met somebody as awesome as you and they mean it, then you know, just slow it down and see what happens and see if they can take a breath because you're not going anywhere, but you need to move more slowly than they do. Yeah. There's one more I want to bring up that I actually, this wasn't part of yours, but uh, was in another article, but I think that you, you've, we've talked about this before is if your partner or the person you're dating jokes about being bad at relationships. <laughs> Yeah, it's not a joke. Uh, <laughs> this is one of those things where you're sort of playing your cards, you're putting your cards out there and you're saying, yeah, I really suck at relationships. Ha 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 ha. I mean, on the one hand, thank you for being honest. But on the other hand, you're waving a flag in front of me. And why would you bring that up? You know, you should be telling me that maybe you didn't do well in the past, but you've had some therapy or some coaching or you've read some books and you really want to be better at relationships. I'd much rather hear that, wouldn't you, Silica? <laughs> no, exactly. And and you do, you start thinking, why are you telling me? It's almost like an exit strategy that if it doesn't, if it doesn't work, yeah, you're preparing yourself for an exit strategy, either for yourself or for the other person. It's not funny. I mean, you know, maybe one, oh, I suck at this, you know, but if the constant like self-deprecating habit i would definitely yeah, pay attention pay attention yeah. to that sandy we're, we're starting to come to the end what i want to make sure we talk about is why do we do this you know why do we ignore silent red flags i mean they do seem a little bit more than silent <laughs> yeah well they're not so obvious to a lot of people especially if you grew up in a home where things weren't so normal. You don't know where that line is. And the more healthy you become, the more obvious these things become to you. And they don't always show up early on. Um, another reason is that people often do hide their true self in the beginning. We come with a representative with a mask on and we try to be our best. And you can't hide crazy for too long. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> Another reason is that we often like to see people through these rose colored glasses in the beginning, because especially if we're infatuated and we're really attracted, we tend to see these signs, but we don't want to. So we just go, eh, yeah. push it down. Not well, important. We kind of like this person. We want it to, we want it to be true. Yeah. Yeah especially if you haven't met somebody you connected with in a long time. So mm -hmm. you, you go like, oh my God, I'm so excited. I feel a connection for the first time. Oh, so, you know, he mismanages his money. <sighs> we'll work on that. <laughs> so <laughs> um, another reason is 
if a person has low self-esteem um, and has trouble setting boundaries, it can be really hard to believe that these things are true red flags. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's me, you know, and I think a lot of people just say, uh, I'm, I'm the problem. I must be too sensitive. Maybe it's me. We believe it's as good as it gets. Like if you've really been on a string of bad dates and have had bad relationships and you meet somebody and they have some of the qualities or most of the qualities that you want. And you believe that you shouldn't want more because that's not realistic. Mm -hmm. And the last one is that um, people have been raised to minimize red flags. I, I mean, I've heard so many stories of people who were raised by parents who said, you'd be lucky to go out with a person who wants you. So Ugh, is right. But that's, that's what a lot of people's experience is. Well, what what's difficult about this, and we're, like I said, we're starting to come at the end here, is that as a silent red flag, you don't know, maybe, you know, should you give more, you know, attention to this? Or should you just, you know, are you being, well, too picky? Another thing we're going to talk about. So it's just, I think I wanted to bring this up with you again, to start the, the, the thought process, you know, is this something I need to pay attention to more or is this something we can in fact work through and, you know, have a beautiful new relationship? Uh, I'll throw it over to you before we close. I think that if you have a concern, bring it up, you know, especially if it's more subtle, mm -hmm. bring it up. You may be overreacting. You may be misunderstanding. The person may not be aware of their behavior and how it affects you. And they're willing to compromise, work it out. Then that's great. And if they make you wrong and make you the problem or ignore you or get defensive, then that's also a good sign because that tells you a lot more about the person that it's not a good person for you. I think what we often do is we just jump to a conclusion too quickly in either direction. And it's important to get curious to know that each person is a blank slate. And until they rule themselves out, rule them in and get to know who they are. And you might be pleasantly surprised and you might also dodge a bullet. Great point, Sandy, thank you. Um, as always, we'll link to all of your information, your book choice points in dating, which covers a lot of what we discussed today and how to deal with it. And I look forward to our next conversation on Second Act TV. Mm -hmm.